ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of the Rockefeller Foundation, Dr. Judith Roden. Thank you and welcome. It's great to see everyone here, a lot of energy. Uh, I hope you're feeling, we certainly felt it as we were coming in and everyone had a chance to see some of the uh, extraordinary inventions we'll be talking about today. And on behalf of all my colleagues at Rockefeller, I want to thank you for joining us at our second now annual innovation forum. Um, the latest in a series of events we're hosting to celebrate our centennial in 2013. Uh, it was nearly a century ago then, in 1913, when the Rockefeller Foundation first embarked on its bold mission to promote the well-being of mankind, then mankind, now humanity, throughout the world. Today, 99 years later, the world in which we live might certainly have been a rude awakening to John D. Rockefeller and his altruistic lieutenants who helped found the field of modern philanthropy. For one thing, they'd be stunned by the technology that has come to dominate our modern lives. Of course, they'd also be stunned by the fact that despite all the gadgetry that borders perhaps on wizardry, we're still struggling with different manifestations of the same problems that were present in their day and age. How to treat and prevent diseases that devastate communities and economies around the world how to lift people from poverty through education and economic development, how to provide bountiful food and affordable housing. And as the complexity of our world has grown, so too has the complexity of solving humanity's fundamental challenges. But one thing our founder would recognize as unchanged in 2012 is the power of innovation and its ongoing work and its ongoing role in the work of the Rockefeller Foundation. In his day, innovation led the foundation to develop a Nobel Prize winning vaccine for yellow fever and to create the field of public health. Later, it sparked the green revolution in agriculture that saved a billion lives in Latin America and Asia, among other revolutionary achievements. Today, innovation remains at the heart of our work. It's the theme for our centennial activities and it's the subject for this forum. Innovation, if I may define it, um, is a product, a service, or a process that is discontinuous from previous practice and that yields new avenues for solving acute problems. In our view, and the view of many academics and strategists who study innovation theory, the innovations that best speed up society's ability to address pressing social needs are often recombinant. That is, there are hybridization of existing elements that are combined in new ways, leaving stronger solutions in their wake. How does that process work? Innovation involves making new and unforeseen connections, sometimes between people and ideas. Therefore, we have this wonderful gathering of luminaries from diverse backgrounds. But it's more than that. We also see design innovations that sometimes yield transformations in the way that product innovation alone cannot. So we're investing in new design innovations. For example, an online game called Catalyst for Change that was developed by our grantee, Institute for the Future. Catalyst for Change was a rapid 48-hour online game designed to engage people from around the world to generate ideas by addressing the pressing problem, what if right now, today, we could imagine thousands of new paths out of poverty. Players fielded Twitter length 140 character idea cards in order to create chains of ideas. The players then earned points by either initiating cards that others built on or by building on those previously played cards that extended the conversation by generating a lot of momentum for certain ideas or identified barriers that allowed others to adapt new ideas to different contexts. In 48 hours of gameplay, there were 1,600 people from 79 countries who played over 18,000 idea cards, this time in four languages, and according to Jane McGonigal, the uh, innovator uh, and inventor of the game, the first time that it had ever been tried online simultaneously in multiple languages. Four of the top 10 point earners were from outside the United States, 
and at least half the players came from the developing world. The game resulted in some fantastic and fantastically innovative ideas, such as innovation hubs sponsored by private organizations as an alternative form of international aid and ways to break down the, the hege hegemony of certain kinds of government to government funding, or the award-winning idea card that suggested using social media platforms to vote on best practice government projects aimed at poverty alleviation with only the targeted communities as the voters. The sky is truly the limit when it comes to design innovations. And the reason we're so grateful and so excited to have your participation is because this innovation forum is itself a design innovation. It's designed, if you will, to explore solutions to pressing global challenges by probing the collective wisdom of this group. And we aim to do so by facilitating a robust dialogue around these challenges. So today, here's what we're going to do. First, we'll introduce you to some exciting, new, cutting-edge technologies that are just beginning to capture imaginations around the globe. Then we will ask you to join us and join one another in designing ways that these technologies might be applied to benefit everyone, but especially poor or vulnerable populations that we at Rockefeller aim to serve. In other words, how can we make sure that the benefit of these technologies don't bypass those at the bottom. We're asking you to become innovators with us, identify pathways for taking these technologies from this room and applying them to benefit poor, vulnerable people around the world. This is not meant to be a typical conference, but rather a day-long conversation and day-long action among you, the participants. To that end, we've organized the sessions to build on one another to instigate exchanges that might lead us closer as a group to powerful new ideas. Today is a different innovation process, but it adds to the work of our 2011 Innovation Forum. Last year, we asked participants to help us identify and frame problems that must be solved to avert looming crises related to water shortages, food shortages, and looming urban challenges. Often, if you can frame the problem in a new or different way, it can help to build to better solutions. Together at that session last year, we framed 34 big problems. I'd like to report on our progress on those problems as identified by participants in the 2011 Innovation Forum. Over the last year, we've launched a major project to help develop new models for managing cities in ways that help those cities build resilience to cope with unexpected change and also build greater economic opportunity for poor and marginalized populations. We also took three problems framed at last year's Innovation Forum and we launched a global challenge for solutions. We offered $100,000 grants for each of the very best ideas and we received almost 2,000 entries. Throughout today's forum, you will see on screens around you the eight ideas that we intend to fund from among the 15 finalists identified by an international panel of judges. Overall, that's more than a million dollars in grants that attendees last year helped us to steer. And now it's your turn to do the same. We are living, after all, in a time of great dynamism with volatility and change and uncertainty, perhaps, everywhere we look. In the next 40 years, the planet is predicted to host 2 billion more people who will be more connected physically and technologically than ever before. When we look around, we all see the consequences of those shifts. Crises now ripple across systems and sectors and geographies, often outrunning our responses. There are dramatic changes in where and how people live, and they weaken the ability of traditional means of supporting people in places. And while global systems create new potential for growth, they also have accelerated inequality and environmental degradation that will not reverse without intervention. Looked through one lens, these realities can create daunting new challenges. But I think the realities also present myriad opportunities for design innovations. For the first time in history, perhaps, 
The world has the knowledge and means to bring the systems of information and the systems of communication technology to bear on a number of these global problems. Through design innovations, among others, we really can reimagine the future. And that's what we're asking you to do here with us today, to reimagine the future. The inventions, the ideas, the innovations that we will spotlight and discuss throughout this innovation forum were chosen because the conversation actually has yet to begin around their potential social application. In other words, we have an opportunity today to explore the frontier of social innovation together. The economics and management theorist Peter Drucker once said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. At the Rockefeller Foundation, we couldn't agree more. And looking around this room, I imagine, I hope, that we're not alone in this sentiment. So without further ado, let's get started. Thank you. <laughs> 